It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to feel a bit lost. You've never been this version of you before. All the other versions had to fight to get to this one. And this one is brand new. You haven't experienced the world as this version of you before. So it's okay. You're going to feel a little lost. Give yourself some time. Give yourself some grace. Stay encouraged. Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we will see the continuation of the story of the woman who divorced her millionaire ex-husband, how she regrets losing her dream life, how she is angry for listening to her divorced friends, and how dating Chad has only been a path of pain for her. We want to invite you to smash that like button, let's support the movement. Subscribe to the channel. That's the only contribution we ask of you, man. Add your grain of sand to the movement. Share your experience in the comments for any man who needs it. Without further introduction, let's get started. Hey, it's me, Jenna. Recently divorced and trying to figure out this new way of life. I'm pretty for sure I'm in a new phase. I don't seem to fit in anywhere. Like anywhere. It's like my whole identity is gone. For 21 years, I was a mom. I did everything. I was a wife. Then I got separated and was in the phase of like, oh, I'm becoming free. I'm finding myself. I'm getting out of this abusive relationship and had to deal with all that trauma. And now that I'm past that, I'm literally like, what's new? Like, what's more in life? Like, what is there? Like, I want to change everything. And so much has already changed in my life that I'm like terrified that I'm just going above and beyond, above and beyond. When I met you, I thought I had found the person that I was going to spend the rest of my life with. I was done. So all the boys and all the bars and all the obvious daddy issues, who cared? Because I was done. You left me. You chose Addison. I'm all glued back together now. I make no apologies for how I chose to repair what you broke. You don't get to call me a whore. No! God, please, no! 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 You have changed things, or you have been changed. I want to keep a favorite phrase of divorced women. I left an abusive relationship. You know, she left her abuser, and now she doesn't know how to fit into her new life. She knows that what she really misses is her lifestyle. These are the kind of women who, in their youth, try to marry a millionaire. She succeeded, not for love, but for money, as we will see later when she cries over a new Chad. But now she is free, going back to what she knows, dressing up, going to bars and clubs trying to catch another millionaire. She says she left an abusive relationship, but we will see later how she regrets leaving her abuser. Hey, it's Jenna, recently divorced, 47, and giving tips and asking questions about this new life after divorce. And I don't know, I'm in a different stage today. Honestly, I literally have been having a great week, amazing week. And then all of a sudden today, my emotions, I had the craziest thoughts. And I wonder, does anybody else feel this way? Like, I feel like I'm in mourning of the life I thought that I was going to have. And I'm kind of pissed at myself. I stayed in a marriage for 23 years and built up a family and my ex's career and everything. And we literally just got to where it was supposed to be everything we dreamed of, like owned a company making, you know, almost a million dollars. And that was my breaking point. And I left it all, like left it all. And I'm not a person that is about money and I'm not a person who feels like they have to have like labels and name brands and all that stuff. But I really have found that like, I've kind of been in mourning of the like, oh my gosh, like I gave it all up and I don't have a traditional career. I'm a photographer that in my marriage, it was made to be a hobby. I never could outdo my other. I had to drop everything, you know to keep up with the family, 
for their needs to make sure everything built in their career, their business, all that. So it wasn't like I had a nine to five where I got 401, where I got steady income, all that. Yes, I market the crap out of my business. Yes, I'm an amazing photographer. And yes, I have um so many amazing clients that are great. But the reality was like everything was around my family. So when I chose to leave, I gave it all up, like all up. And most people are like, oh, well, you know, you should have got your end in court. No, South Carolina has some crazy, crazy rules. And I came out of a situation where I had been mentally abused, financially abused for 23 years. Like I was gaslit for so long that when I finally left, I had no clue that the worst was yet to come in the one year of separation. And so it's weird because I find that I just thought today for a split second and I'm like, what the hell's wrong with you? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I thought I should have just stayed. I should have stayed. It wasn't that bad. Like you made it 23 years. You made 26 years total. Your kids are like college and one's almost out of high school. Like you made it, you made it. Like it didn't matter at this point. They can do their own separate life and all that. You made it to the point where you guys were making so much money and you had big houses and you could do whatever you want and you can relax. And I literally just called my friend. I was like freaking out. Cause like, I'm my biggest, I'm the biggest person that keeps me back. Like I'm terrified. I don't have 401k. My counsel did not have my back. I was so traumatized when I got out and then terrorized for the next year that I couldn't even think straight to help the people that wanted to help me and the people I entrusted to help me didn't help me and there's just timelines that you can't stop and so it is what it is and you know I'm 47 years old and it's not like I'm 25 I'm healthy kind of I have an autoimmune disease which means it's life-threatening for the rest of my life you know things can change but it's not like I'm an invalid and can't do anything for myself but it is terrifying like I could have stayed. I'm so mad that I think this way. I could have stayed. My life would have been so much easier. Nice. Remember, brother, a man is the only one who marries for love. Women marry for a lifestyle. Many women, when they decide to divorce, always have their friends and the lawyer saying, yes, you deserve something better. Because a woman's worst enemy is another woman. And the other is the lawyer who only thinks about how much his firm will make from a millionaire divorce. So they don't stop to think that maybe things won't turn out as they are told. This is a woman who married young and didn't experience much of the life of debauchery, you know, the Chad carousel. Surely her husband is older now, and she wants to leave him, but she received abuse. However, life wasn't so bad because money can buy happiness, but women forget that it also pays for good lawyers, and that's what her ex-husband did. Women don't appreciate it. They take for granted that the great life they have is due to their efforts, especially when they stay at home. But everything around you costs money, and the man pays for it. Now, as you saw in the intro, she has moved four times. As you saw in the first video, she has nowhere to go because she probably doesn't have the money to get into the places she used to frequent. Her life is upside down, and it seems that the nights of debauchery already bore her. But let's see what more there is to tell. gone and done whatever I wanted kind of I mean I say that and then I think as I say that I'm like but you couldn't it's like so weird that my brain thinks that way and I called my girlfriend and I told her it was like I probably should have just stayed I should have just stayed it wasn't that bad and she just started she's like Jenna what are you talking about like literally they were horrible to you they told you to shut up they told you not to breathe not to eat every little part of your life every day you were miserable and you were crying you are not remembering that and then I just keep thinking, I'm like, but I had a huge house and all my bills were paid for and I never had to think how they were going to get paid. My grass was cut, well, not the last year of separation, but you know what I mean? All the basic things to keep the image up. And I gave up my entire image that I was trained to have for my family for 23 years. Like I was the stay-at-home mom and I made the image of we were the perfect family. I have beautiful children. They were dressed right. They, you know, didn't 
top sports like cheer and football and went to all that stuff. And I was, you know, the cheer mom and, you know, did all that stuff and then did photography on the side just to make money to make ends meet while he built his career up. And I stayed long enough to just give it all up but when it was like right there. And I'm so mad at myself because I'm not this way. I don't think this way. And it's funny because I never... Like, I feel like it's almost made me hard in dating because anybody who is accomplished and all that, I'm like, oh, no, 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 like, I'm never going to depend on a man again, ever, especially after South Carolina laws. I want love. Don't get me wrong. I want love. I want, I am a forever girl. Like, I have learned in this dating scene, I am not a date around kind of girl. I also learned that, like, I immediately don't want full contact boyfriend. Like, I... I need to heal. And do I want that one consistent where like we, hey, you want to go to a football game? Do you want to go to a bonfire? Do you want to have fun? That kind of thing? Yeah. But do I want to be on lockdown and have someone call me every five minutes and be like, what are you doing? Where are you at? I? No, I don't want that. I've, I've got to heal myself. I've got to make sure whatever's right is right. And if that person comes along in my life and, you know, it continues and it progresses, like I hope they're forever, but I'm not searching for it. But it is hard. To be a single female when you're 47, when your kids are out. It's not like I have little kids. I always say, if I had little kids, this would be not even a question. Because that instinct comes in. I have to, my kids, you know, I got little kids. I got to get them up for school. I got to get them to here. I got to get them to there. I got to go to work. I got to do that. I don't have that. I'm literally at home. The worst time of my day is after the gym at night when the house is quiet and silent and I just am in my thoughts. And it's so, so hard. Like, I'm my own boss. If I don't go to work, if I get sick, nothing happens. And my general Murphy photography would just crumble. And I love what I do. I have a passion for it. I love it. But I'm in my head. Like, I'm literally in my head. And I'm booking shoots and I'm doing amazing. I'm so excited. But every time I think future and long run, I freak out. Because my future was right there. Like it was solidified. Like I was comfortable for the rest of my life. Maybe not mentally in my relationship, but financially I was fine. And I gave it all up to be happy. And I know time will come. I know that will happen. And I'm not a materialistic person and I'll never ever be with someone for money. But it's terrifying. Like, am I the only one that feels this way? Like, I think people just think, oh, well, she's blonde, blue eyes. She's a gold digger. She did this. No, no, no. I, we had nothing when we started. Actually, I had more money than my ex. And, you know, I had my own career. And then as things happened, I stayed home and, you know, followed his career. So I'm just so frustrated with myself. I keep telling myself, I'm like, you're not. I remember the bad. It's right here. But I also am like, maybe I should have stayed. It was like stable in every other area but that like is my mental health really that important and then my friends remind me they're like yes like yes like you're just in that crazy in-between stage and I'm trying to work through it I'm trying to work through the process but it's terrifying it's terrifying to start over at 47 and I just I would love any tips like does anybody else feel this way like I know men probably have the same situation too but I really think it's more terrifying like me as a female and I've even considered going to different types of jobs and careers. And I love my job. Like, I make good money. But I'm so terrified. I'm like, I don't want 401k. Like, I don't know. Is this another stage of divorce? I'm happy. But I go into these random thoughts of, you gave it all away. Like, was it worth giving away? And I know it was. I know it was for my mental sanity. I know it was for my happiness. It will all come together. But it's still terrifying to start over at this age. Anybody else feel this way? Like, is this any tips? Just let me know. I just, I'm trying to figure it out. And I know I did what was right, but it's hard to know you gave away. M my ex will probably never make less than a million dollars every year. And I'm starting over. And basically as if I'm a 20 year old again. And it just doesn't seem fair, but I have to quit crying and just do it. So any tips and advice? Is this normal? How did you get through this stage? Tell me what you did, because I have no choice but to do it. I'll tell you what happened here. 
This woman didn't receive alimony from this man. It seems she got the house, but she can't maintain it. To make matters worse, her children are grown, so she doesn't get child support either. In other words, she now lives on her own. She believes that because she thinks she founded the company and is the true creator of that wealth, it should support her for life. But you know why I always say that a woman's worst enemy is another woman? Because she had a friend advising her, telling her to leave because she wasn't happy and to pursue her happiness. That's why I tell you to be aware of who your wife talks to. If her friends are single and divorced, brothers, you'll be next. This is what happened to her. She was misled, and now she misses the great life she had, the places she traveled to, not having any worries, doing whatever she wanted because her husband paid the credit card. Now the house is falling apart, her kids are traveling with her ex-husband, you know, daddy the millionaire. She stays home, her boyfriends don't pay for anything, as we'll see in a moment. She's now bored, missing living without responsibilities. But you said he was an abuser, that you deserve to be happy, that you needed mental health. Now you cry for your ex-husband's money, your abuser. That's what you get for taking advice from divorced women. I don't even know where we left off. You were still in a relationship. I was? Yep. Damn. All I'm gonna say is that situationships after being married, the first one, first relationship of any kind that you go through, I think it's way harder to get over than even the marriage. So hear me out, and this is why. I've heard this before, I never thought it was true. I thought there is no way in hell I was married to someone for 23 years. Like, there's no way that the first relationship or situationship that I actually feel something for somebody would be harder than leaving a marriage with children. But it's true, and let me tell you why. Because usually what happens is, by the time a female leaves, she has exhausted every single part of her mind, soul, body, spirit, hope, anything you can imagine to keep that relationship together. She has thought of every way possible, begged, pleaded, you know, just prayed, dreamed for this to work out. Because a normal relationship, if you're going to get married, you're not going to go into it wanting to get divorced. And especially if you have children, a mama is always going to try and keep her babies together, especially with her baby daddy, right? So I never thought that. But as a marriage breaks down and as a woman begs and pleads for that person to give them love, affection, be kind, or whatever it is, the love goes away. And you may be going through the actions and you may be wishing and hoping and praying for all those things, especially if you have children involved. But it's inevitable when someone is treating you horribly for the emotion to go away, for the, the love to go away. So by the time I got out of my marriage, there was no love loss. And it's funny because I've been one, everyone's seen my TikToks and it really does blow my mind when people are like, oh, you need to get over your ex. And I'm like, I've been over my ex for years, like years upon years. I actually like had to literally like pep myself up in my head to try to, even be in the mindset of wanting to be like a couple and had to literally like talk myself into certain things, especially when it came to physical stuff since he wasn't into that. And so when it was so random, I literally had to convince myself that this was, you know, something that needed to happen to make the marriage work or to make him happy or whatever. It became part of my job, right? So it is crazy when my friends would say, be careful of that first relationship where you actually have emotion. And I was like, no no way i'm not that girl like never gonna be that way but it's true it really is true because what happens is by the time i left my marriage i was so closed off and shut off to being hurt to being rejected to being put down or talked down to or anything else that you could think of that i was just so happy to get out of my marriage don't count all the other drama i'm just talking about the affection and love part of the marriage that by the time i had gotten out I was just so thankful to be out of that toxic environment that I was completely shut off to having my feelings hurt now granted I had one year of separation and there was a whole other can of worms that was thrown into the mix but the actual love for that person had already been gone for years now don't get me wrong I want nothing bad to happen to my ex he will always be the father of my children um yes I do not think he's the nicest person and yes he definitely put me through hell but the reality is I will always have deep down 
a affection, I would not call it love, but an affection for him in that aspect that he's the father of my children. He will always be attached to me in some form or shape because I want my children to be happy. I don't want them to ever feel like they have to pick or choose. And as they get older, they will have their own family. So we always be in some kind type of connection. Granted, it's not in that place right now, but in my mind, as a good parent and as a good future, you know, co-parent, I hope that to happen. But what I'm talking about is when you first get that little piece of energy with that special someone, now don't get me wrong, like my inboxes are crazy full, all that stuff. There's a gazillion guys I have no connection with, but that one that just like for some odd reason, you have no idea why. Stop it. Get some help. See what I'm saying? She gets divorced to make videos and seek sympathy. Women are addicted to attention, especially those who got everything in their youth just because of their beauty. Now that she's older, she comes up with the story of her abusive ex-husband and wants sympathy from simps in her comment section. Believe me, there are simps out there that it's embarrassing. But the reality is that it wasn't losing her ex-husband that hurt her. It was losing his money. I bet she won't be happy with any man who comes after him because he set the financial bar too high. Now she's emotionally crying over a Chad, a man who brings nothing to the table but his seed. Now, at 47, she'll go for a younger man who can satisfy her, you know where. That's why it hurts her because Chad won't stay with a 47-year-old woman. He does what her husband didn't, and now he tells her he doesn't want a commitment. But let's see the second part. Like, no idea why that there's just this like connection, like you've met before that you, they just get you or whatever it is, it's different and it takes that wall down. And brick by brick, my wall came down. And it was funny, like you get that first touch or that first kiss or that first, you know, affection and, and being with someone, not just physically, but mentally and psychologically um, and spiritually and just, that want to an energy like that almost like you're like butterflies in your stomach you know what I mean like when you're younger and you're in high school and you just can't wait to see that person or you can't wait to talk to them and hear about their day or you know just just a touch barely grazing their you know arm as you walk by is just like electric and that's what it's like like legit that le is legit what it's like now don't get me wrong you know it's a long process to find that one and you know more than likely that first situation ship or that first person in your life that comes into your life is not going to be the one that's going to be in your life forever but it really is surprising to me how hard that one relationship was to get over and you know deep in the back of your head you're like what if and why did this or what what was the reason this person got my attention out of all the others? And what was the reason that this person made me think that like, you know what, maybe I could do this again. Like, is this love? Is this what love is supposed to be? Because it was so closed off and shut down for so long that I didn't even know that I could love again. I was that wife that did everything for my children and my husband. And I didn't step out on him and all that stuff. Like, even though I was miserable and unhappy, I was loyal. And it's just crazy to have, like, you don't think of being with anybody else. Like, that was not my mindset. And by the time I got out, I was just trying to heal. So when that person just popped into my life, I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, okay, it's just a simple go out on a date. And then I'm like, oh, wow. Like, I'm checking my phone and like, did he message or did he like, or did he look? And then you get that first kiss or, you know, walking around holding her hand and you're just like, wow, this is comfortable. Like I could do this. Like I want this. And then the moment you have that friendly interaction, the one we all want. And it's, I mean, obviously things are not perfect, but you know, it's comfortable and it's relaxed and it's what you need and you actually feel like you crave it. Let me tell you, that's just hard to get over because once you've opened up that door, I don't know about y'all, especially my age group. I'm like, woo, it takes a lot to get my attention. So if you got my attention and you made me want more, it's hard and you get attached. I feel like I got attached 
way easier to this person than anybody else. And I just, my brain racks around like that situation ship. And people are like, well, how long did you date or whatever? And you're like, hmm, we didn't really have like a relationship relationship. It was just the connection and to get to know each other and all that. You know what I mean? So it, it is crazy because I found it harder to get over my situation ship right after my marriage than it has any other relationship in my entire life. Doesn't that sound crazy? I just don't get it. It blows my mind, blows my mind that I would ever feel a connection for someone like that. Someone I just known for a couple months and talked to for a couple months versus someone I knew for decades. Does anybody else find this normal? Like, I mean, I've heard it a lot, but I just never thought it was something real or true. And I guess I'm learning. I also think it's a really good thing too, because you know what it showed me? It showed me that the person that hurt me and broke me and told me I was not worthy and did not want to touch me and did not have any affection for me, didn't break my spirit and made me cold to other people. So in a way, it's almost like, even though that situation was hard and it is hard to get over, I feel like it was the best thing possible because it let me know that I am not closed off. I am not cold to love. I do want love. I do want affection. I do want someone to be in my life. But it also taught me that just because I feel energy for someone, maybe they don't feel it. And I have to accept the fact that like life goes on and that energy may have been great for you, but not somebody else. And that relationship is over and to move on. And you're an adult. You're going to find it at some point. Life will happen and not to force it. So, yeah, I feel like the situation was harder to get over than my marriage, which is kind of crazy. But here I am, thriving, moving on, and so open to it. I'm actually excited for the next one. So we'll see. I'll keep you all updated. But let me know what you think. Is that first relationship after divorce the hardest one to get over? Or were you all just running around crazy? Because I've heard that too. Have a good day. Uh, oh, oh. She grieved the relationship while still in it and was surely tired of her ex-husband, who was probably older and couldn't perform as well in bed. But then came Chad, you know, the young guy. And as she says, he caught her attention and she opened the door to her legs. As always, Chad elevated her emotions. But as always, Chad is a man dedicated to spreading his seed far and wide. He will never make time for a 47-year-old woman on the wall, with kids. That single mother is just for fun. Now she compares chapter 1 with Chad to chapter 10 with her ex-husband. Of course, it won't be the same. The years that man endured and gave her everything, Chad will never do that. But I want to note that she says her ex-husband was not an unfaithful man. That guy seems like a typical hard-working beta provider. She broke her marriage to get on the carousel, to go out again like a young girl. But as always, they are experts at making bad decisions because it's not the same at 25 as it is at 47. This is the second part of this story. I wanted to remind you how it goes for women when they leave a high-value man, always calling him an abuser when they just want to leave him for chat. But the wall awaited her at the end of her journey because we all know the wall doesn't forgive. <laughs> We've reached the end of the video, but before we go, the questions are for you. What do you think were the reasons this woman didn't win in the divorce? Why do you think getting over Chad hurt her so much, while getting over her ex-husband of 23 years didn't hurt at all? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your support means the world to us and motivates us to create more content. Stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Wall.